Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Stars with Stassi, where no matter who you are or what you are on this cosmic journey, you are welcome right here. Greetings, I'm Stassi, your trusted psychic and intuitive reader. This is a reading for my empaths, super empaths, and highly sensitive beings for the month of April 2023. Welcome. If you've not been to my channel before, I will read from some oracle cards, whatever spirit asks me to pull. Um, then I'm going to get your current energies, recent past, and incoming energies, okay? I get my messages from my ancestors and spirit guides, and they are asking me to tune in one moment, please. Welcome. Thank you to my angels, ancestors, spirit guides, and interdimensional beings overseeing this act of divination. Thank you. Please give me the words for the highest and best for my empaths and super empaths and highly sensitive beings. For the purposes of this reading, I am going to just refer to all of us as empaths. Welcome. Um, I literally received a download moments before making this video, making this just before making this, <laughs> um, to do it. I was sitting on the deck, enjoying my evening, looking at the moon, thinking, oh, look at her. She's so pretty. And then she said, go get up and get the impasse together. Unite. Do a reading. I said, okay. So here I am. All right. It's a fascinating idea. So we're going to do it. Empty well, time to replenish. Isn't that the truth, empaths? Time to replenish. We have been around some really funky, funky energies for a while, right? So it is time that we get together as our light bright selves and alum. <laughs> because let me tell you, oh, sure enough, this is number 16, all right? So one and six is seven, an initiatory number, higher higher uh, level of consciousness. So if we are about to break through, which we are, you know that through this ascension is amazing. So this empty well, it's time to replenish. And spirit says the way to replenish is to find each other, truly. So I think as impasse, not even I think, I know 100% that it is time that we find ourselves not just who we are, like our individual or multifaceted self, but that we find each other, all right? Um, so I'm just going to say this. If you're here, you're clearly a magical person. You're also an empath. What you may want to consider doing is finding a group of humans that vibrate the way you do spiritually. So if you're a solitary practitioner, perhaps find a coven or something, uh, a magical, or I'm sorry, a mystery school. All right. Um, you could, you know, go to a church of some sort. Um, you could do a retreat. You could do, um, you know, there's so, there's so much you could do, but just find other people that vibrate the way you do. All right. It's very important. Even if it's that you are coming to different channels with different, um, you know, advisors, I think it's really important that we somehow find each other, all right, one another. So Wailing Tree, Reconciliations, number 59. So 59 would be what? 14, which is five. All right. So number of disruption for sure, all right. And with the Wailing Tree Reconciliations Empaths, I will say this. Let me pull one more card. Please, Spirit, thank you. Middle of the deck, all right. What do we have? Lost Compass, Getting Back to Integrity. Perfect, I understand clearly. All right, one more. What is this? Root Girl. Oh, this came up for my Aquarius. Okay. So, let's talk about it. This wailing tree, time to replenish, getting back to integrity, and this disowned self. Many of us, okay, the, the empaths, we have gone through a dark night recently, all right? If you haven't just gone through it, then you're in it now. You're not alone. It's painful as hell, but here we are, okay? 
The reason we went through that is because we had to shed all of those things that were preventing us from shining our best and brightest because we have a cosmic responsibility as light workers to shine brightly. And you know what I'm talking about, okay? So with this root girl, the distant, the disowned self, that shadow side, this equals number 10, all right? This is a shadow side. And this is a dark thought, a dark part of you. This is you getting back to integrity. Many of us really had to sit with all of the choices we had made in our lives. And we had to really come to that place of acceptance. And you have to reconcile. And this reconciliation empath isn't necessarily with someone else. It's with yourself. As empaths, we if you have been... And, and many of us have been at one time or another an unempowered or unhealed um, empath, right? Uninformed empath. You're just out there energetically open and bleeding, bleeding out. You know, once you realize, oh my gosh, half of this stuff isn't mine to worry about. Half of this energy I'm feeling isn't mine. When you start to recognize that you truly are an energetic sponge and you start to gain control of that, there is a period of almost shock that you would have allowed yourself to be in any situation that, and then you fill in the blank. It's time to reconcile all of those, how did that happen to me? Why did that happen to me? Reconcile it, forgive yourself, forgive the humans that were in your mind, the catalyst to whatever pain you were absorbing because they were there divinely placed because you placed them there to learn the lessons to get you to where you are now. So something to think about is this wailing tree, reconcile, reconcile with yourself. And if there are others that you must reconcile with, remember that's your business. You do not need to let everyone on earth know that they are forgiven. You can forgive them right from the comfort of your own home and they never need to know about it because your forgiveness is your business and their anger is their business. Okay, empaths, you have the right to reconcile, forgive and be wonderful and shining brightly and you don't have to tell anyone. You don't have to tell anyone that you have forgiven them or that it's okay because it's not okay, right? We feel it all. We know all the transgressions. We know each lie. We know every, we, we know it all. And it makes it very, very difficult to be around the average person. So a couple of things. We need to change our environment because if they're not ascending as well and we want to protect ourselves, we need to create an environment where there are like-minded people around us. One. Two, we have to replenish. We have got to find our each other. We've got to get out in nature. We've got to be, you go hug a tree. And I'm not kidding. All right. Go find a tree, sit near it, hug it, love it. Go sit near a body of water. If that's not possible, take a long shower. If that's not possible, you know, take a short one. Find a place where you can be cleansed, replenished, whole. Sit in the moonlight. You'll get the downloads. We are sensitive to all of it. And when you let spirit know that you're ready to surrender to the messages that they have to give you, everything changes. All right. So that is part of what changes when you are an empowered empath and one who is energetically open. So replenish. Okay. And, and we're going to tighten up our energy fields. And as a community of light workers, we will get through it together because you're not alone. All right. All of those low vibrational activities that you had been around and absorbed those behaviors. When you stop being around it, you stop thinking about it, you stop doing it. For empaths, it's that simple. If you want to break an addiction, you want to break a habit, get away from it. Empaths are a different creature altogether. Half of what we do is because we're near it and we just become it. It's, it's fascinating when you know that about yourself. That's a whole nother level of control. 
If you remove yourself until you can figure out how to manage your frequencies, then do it, okay? And get in touch with your shadow sides. Love them, truly love it. If, you know, if in the past you have some deep shame about something that you think, oh, how did I ever do it? You did it. You did whatever it was. And now you know better, so you do better. And when you can really start putting an ending, the number 10, that's an ending, right? Because we're going to simplify that to the number one and the number zero, where one is going to be a new beginning and zero is all of the things that it can be because you've completed a cycle, okay? You've gone from the nine to the 10, which is really a one and a zero. In numerology, you reduce the numbers one through nine or zero through nine, okay? So, huh, the, the root girl, they're just saying to get in touch with that shadow side, love it, and, and heal it, replenish, right? Because that shadow side is still very much a part of you. Probably the most important part of you. Because your shadow side is there to teach you lessons, right? It's that thing that you need to work on. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. <clears throat> They're really coming through. And for those of you that do any type of divination, you can, for all the divination I do, I'll tell you what, I can't shuffle a deck of cards to save my life. <laughs> my oh, my entire life, I'm not... I you know, my mother was a professional tarot reader as well. And she, <laughs> I can't tell you that she was any, um, any better at the shuffling because we used to try to, uh, when I was little, she would say to me, can you do it? You know, and I would say, no, it'll come right. Spirit's going to come and, uh, get these fingers going, I guess. All right. Last time. All right. Incoming. I'm sorry. Best and brightest messages for my empaths. Sorry, my mother's passed and she is one of my guides and <laughs> she's, I'm hearing her right now very clearly like, yeah, isn't that a bitch? Because that is something she would say. All right, I'm sorry. Ooh, all right. Page of Cups. Six of Wands. Two of Wands. Knight of Pentacles. All right, empaths, let's see. So for, for these readings, it's not like the traditional meaning of the cards because um, this, is an all, this is for all zodiac signs. So it's not specific to that clearly. It's specific to how we as empaths need to manage our energy or what it is that we need to do in this month of April. So I do see celebrations for a lot of us. We, um, some of us are traveling and considering our options of what we're going to do next. Um, you know, really working on manifesting what's next for us. And joyfully so, I believe that many of us are coming out of our dark nights um, and the planetary energies have shifted. I know that I personally am picking up on a different um, energetic source out there. So I do feel that for many of us, there is that feeling of excitement and maybe you may not know why empaths. Um, like I said, we pick up on everything. Some of us, you know, who have learned to fine tune or, or are learning, right? I'm, I'm still learning to fine tune. This can pick up on a variety of different energies and that can sometimes lead to a feelings that are inexplicable, right? So sometimes you get very excited and you're like, what's this about? Or the opposite can happen. And, and, you know, you go through a period of just feeling down. Um, I think that as an empath collective, right? Um, a collective of empaths or however I should word that we are feeling excitement. We're coming to an end of a karmic cycle as a, as a, a species, right? As a planet. Um, many of us are fulfilling 
or, or had all our karmic cycles fulfilled um, recently. So, or it's coming to that um, this year. So in April, there is a lot of excitement. There's a lot of travel. There's a lot of um, celebration for us. And, you know, many of us are getting out there for the first time in a while. So we are sitting here kind of ready to explore, looking out. We've got the world in our hands and we're like, all right, now what? And this Knight of Pentacles, you know, the slowest moving night, but hey, that's good. It's good. It's good to be slow and steady, right? That wins the race. So, you know, we are methodically manifesting our next steps and paths. All right. Recent past for empaths. Yeah, I think a lot of us have, um, as we are replenishing and as we are healing and reconciling our energies, I think that so many paths have opened up for each of us that we kind of need to hunker down and figure out what it is that we want to manifest with all of the possibilities. The chariot. All right. Which way do we go? The tower. So that is what we just went through. Eight of Pentacles. Oh, didn't it happen? Knight of Wands. Now that's the fastest moving knight, right? It's the Knight of Wands I think is the fastest one. Fascinating. So look, we just went through a period of deep transformation. We had to pick a lane. You see this chariot? Number seven, okay? This chariot has one dark horse and one white horse. Which way are you going to go in your spiritual journey, right? I think that that's what it's kind of, that's how I'm reading it for this pool. We had a, we had the tower moment, okay? That is complete transformation. That is, it all went to, it all went to shit. Look at these people falling out of the building, falling out of the tower, right? That's the house of cards has to fall. You have to rebuild. Empaths, we just went through that. And what did we do with that energy? Eight of pentacles. We studied our craft. We studied our craft. We studied ourselves, our energetic fields, and we decided to take action, all right, and change things. Knight of Wands, all right? We decided to take action, be swift. You've got a lot of action cards here, right? It pushed us, this deep transformation pushed us to have emotions and, and, and really sit with all of the things that had just happened. In past, we really, really have been through it. So much heavy energy, but we're coming out of it. With, and that's that's why Spirit was really pushing me to do this reading. And I'm gonna do this often. Probably I'm gonna I'm going to do empath tarot as a regular cycle with the other signs. And comment below if there's some specific type of content regarding empaths that you want to see because this this is becoming a priority for me i'm getting the download as we speak um excellent okay all right spirit what's incoming for the empaths the hermit sure enough <laughs> temperance okay very good very good major arcana the lovers Ooh. look at all this stuff that's that we're gonna get Three of Pentacles, impasse. Hey, oh, finally, is it possible that after all of this, it's all gonna work out in April? Ah, yay! All right, look, the Hermit. So I'm sure that at some point, after getting all of these energies and doing all of this work and figuring out what we want to do, when we make the decision to go forward, there's probably gonna be a few of us that go. That's a lot of responsibility. Oh, maybe I should sit with it a little bit longer. But this is a nine. This is um, this hermit right here. I see this as us kind of sitting with all of the things that are coming. This lover's card, it could be love, but for us, I'm picking up a choice, okay? I'm picking up some choices about what it is that we decide to do mid-April. So for those of us that decide to move forward and um, do something completely different, we are going to be called to birth that into existence. 
this three of pentacles is really, you see this person studying, they're studying their craft and they've made a decision and now they're putting their effort into their, their passion project and they're starting something new. Temperance. I love this card. Temperance, balance, finding that energetic balance. That's how I'm reading it for us here. All right. You might need to make some choices about what it is that you want to do with your time and your energy now that you have replenished your stock, right? Now that you see clearly in past what it is that you need to cut out, I would say between mid to late April, you can expect a lot of changes. You're going to have to make some choices and you're going to have to focus your energies on one thing that makes you whole. And if that one thing is simply to reconcile with yourself and to continue the shadow work, do that. If it is that you're going to rest and, and recharge, do that. All right. But the truth is in paths, you can do it all. All right. You can take the time to recharge, to rediscover yourself, to find the best parts of yourself and to become energetically whole again, all right? Um, how do my empaths become energetically whole after this time? Let me get some messages about how we as empaths can become whole again during this time of transformation and reconciliation with ourselves. What can we do, Spirit? I, I shuffled these already, but I'm just getting... All right. Fire Guardian, ignite your passions. And I will say that I have found this true for myself, all right? I have gone through a period of transformation and wanted something that I could put my energy into, and I started this passion project just for the love of it, right? It, it, it will absolutely turn into all of the things, but I can't say that I knew that initially. And, you know, little by little, I can see, I can see clearly how this is going to go. And I'm so glad that I just took that first step. And so that's all you need to do truly is ignite your passion, take that first step, whatever it is, because you're a light worker and you're needed. Your energy is needed. Your ideas are needed. Your, your passion, your individual unique self is needed. And so many of us have been hiding under covers and getting away from people because the Ascension has us so, I don't know, in tune with everything around us that we've been hiding. And, you know, we might have to, again, for a little bit, go back in to reevaluate all of these lessons. But truly, as you are healing, my empaths, one of the best things you can do for yourself is focus on yourself and your passions. Take back and reel in all your vital energy, all of your life force. Reel it back in. Call back in everything that you ever lent out energetically, truly call it back in for yourself and ask yourself, what can I do next? Where, where can I focus all of my energy? Cause we have so much of it. And with this Ascension happening, you know, it's like magnified what we can do and what we can manifest and, and something to consider in paths, you know, we are amazing manifestors because of the amount of energy we put into our day to day. So if you take that and just put it into something that makes you happy, the benefits of that are unreal. Without even meaning to, you start creating this energetic force around you that really um, makes a difference. It makes a difference for yourself how others perceive you, how you perceive yourself. And naturally, those people and things that didn't serve you will become so uncomfortable in your field that they just go away. And you don't have to do a thing. 
it's amazing. So consider finding your passion, igniting that spark and going through with it. This is summer. Bask in the joy and in the light. Check this out. Direction guardian. Choose your path right here. Same thing as the lovers in this reading. We have to choose what it is that we want to do in paths because we can, we can choose. Didn't I see a seven of cups over here? I thought maybe not. That was another reading. Oh, winter came in. Take care of your needs. I just want to point this out. Summer and winter. Okay, the two polarities here. All right, so that's that balance. Again, empaths. Let's just, we have to find balance. Temperance energy. Balance. We have to find balance between, you know, replenishing ourselves. We have to find the Hello. We have to find the balance when we replenish ourselves to that when we give to others. All right. We have to make choices. But I love this. The direction guardian. Choose your path and paths. Choo choose your paths and paths. <laughs> really spirit that was redundant. But what do they know? Here we go. Choose your paths. I love this reading. Mm. It's a good message though. All right, empaths, so let's let's wrap it up. I think what really Spirit is saying is that we need to, in the month of April, pay special attention to where our energies are, reel them back in, refocus all of our emotions on our passion project and what makes us excited. When we do that, we're going to vibrate differently and we'll be living and walking our divine path. All right? The best thing an empath can do is vibrate high right? Shine brightly. If you can do that, the rest of it really is easy because people that cannot hang will find somewhere else to be. That's the biggest thing. The second thing is good stuff just starts happening to you. Oh my gosh, just left and right. Okay. And the more grateful you are for all of these good things, the more that good that comes. Empaths, you are the strongest manifestors that exist. The emotion that we carry is unmatched. All right. Harness it properly. It's our time to shine. And if you just sit still and focus on you, it will all come your way. I promise you that. I'm a walking example. All right. Spirit, what can we manifest? I love it. True manifesting is about receiving what is of the highest good for all. What else is there to say, empaths? Be the light that shines brightly so that others can find their way home. But don't shine so brightly that you blind them or yourself. Okay? One more time. True manifesting is about receiving what is in the highest good for all. And that's what makes us light workers, Because what is for the betterment of the greater good is always always the first and foremost in our minds. And that's why we are different empaths. I am so proud of us. I am proud of this reading. I am grateful that spirit really made me get up and do this. All right. I am excited about where this particular playlist is going to go. And I'm hopeful to hear from each of you about what you'd like to see regarding empaths. I am excited. Mm, I'm so grateful. Until next time, may the magic that we weave and the words that we speak bring healing to all those who seek it, my empaths, my divine souls. Until next time, shine brightly, be kind to yourselves and each other.